So my name's uh, Llewellyn Morgan, and I'm going to talk to you about um, some themes and interesting things in uh, Virgil's Aeneid. Um, and I thought that one place where I'd start was talking about the city in the Aeneid. Because if you think about it, um, the poem begins talking about cities, very, very interested in cities. In fact, in the first sort of ten lines or so of the poem, we hear about one city that Aeneas left, Troy, and another city that he's going to found. The poem spends a lot of time in other cities as well, though, and one of the strange things about the start of the poem um, is that when we've sort of thought that we're going to start in Troy and head off to Rome and Aeneas is going to found one city having sort of left one, another city that's been destroyed, actually we spend lots and lots of time in a third city, in a completely different city, in the city of uh, Carthage. But again, it's Virgil being very interested in cities, uh, and Aeneas is very interested in cities. That's another way of putting it, isn't it? That um, Aeneas goes to Carthage, and what is it that he likes about Carthage? He likes Dido quite a lot, of course, in Carthage. Um, but what he also likes is the fact that Dido is building a city. That's what he sees when he turns up there, when he's walking over the hill and first sees Carthage, is this busy set of people doing what he desperately wants to do, which is build um, a, a city. And in fact, you know, when he's sort of um, started his affair with Dido and has got sort of settled down in Carthage, when the god Mercury comes down um, to tell him to, to get on his way uh, on the instructions of Jupiter, you know, you've forgotten what you're really about, you need to get to Italy and, uh, and, and found the city you're destined to, to, to found. What is it that Aeneas is doing? He's there, you know, being a, a kind of, a Carthage bricky, isn't he? He's building the city of Carthage. He's in his element. He's doing exactly what he wants to do. Well, okay, so that's in book one and book four. See cities elsewhere as well, don't we? In fact, cities are a kind of fairly regular feature of this, of this poem. In book two, we hear all about the destruction of the city that uh, Aeneas uh, began in, the destruction of the city of, of Troy. Um, and then in book three, we hear, amongst other things, about all the attempts that Aeneas makes <coughs> to find a new city to make up for the loss of Troy. So the city he tries to found in um, Thrace, and another one he tries to found in Crete, and a, another city that he finds at Buthrotum that he you know, isn't tempted to settle at, but it's a sort of a model for um, what Rome, might, what Rome might, might be. So that's in the first half of the poem, where Aeneas is traumatised by, by the, the destruction of his home city, Troy, um, is getting uh, suggestions from, is getting advice from various quarters, supernatural uh, directions, that he's got to found uh, another city, this city in Hesperia in Italy, the city that will be Rome eventually, um, and sort of takes out this um, anxiety that he has by trying to found cities all over the place and even sort of falling in love with with a Carthaginian queen, you know, completely unacceptable thing to do. Essentially, I think, because she's building uh, a, a city. As I say, she no doubt has many other uh, charming uh, aspects to her, but the most important thing is that she's building a city, and that's what really uh, flicks the switch for, for Aeneas. Now, in the second half of the poem, it gets, it's, it's different, obviously. He's, he's got to Italy. He's got to the, the, the vicinity of, of the territory where he's going to found Rome. Um, so the way that the city works in the second half of the poem is rather different, but it remains this completely sort of central preoccupation, both of Aeneas and of uh, the poem. So we uh, visit Latinus's city in Book 7 of the Aeneid, and there's this very long description of it, which in many ways makes it looks, look like a kind of an early form of Rome. Although interesting, Latinus, interestingly, Latinus's city is never actually named, it's never given a a name, as if it doesn't really have a right to exist somehow. Um, in Book 8, uh, Virgil, uh, Aeneas visits the actual site of Rome before Rome has been founded, and there's a kind of very interesting uh, section of poetry there. Interesting to think about how Roman readers would view this description of their city before the city had been founded, a rather peculiar experience they'd have had. And Virgil plays on that, showing various parts of the city before it was uh, a city and when it was a, a pasture for, for cattle instead, which must have been quite disorienting in an interesting way. 
It's another way in which the city um, is used in the second half of the, the, the poem by, by Virgil. And it introduces Homer, the great model of, uh, of poetry for Virgil in the, in the Aeneid, and the Iliad um, specifically. Because what happens in the second half of the poem is that the Latins and the Trojans settle down into uh, a fairly sort of stable sit situation in terms of warfare. The Trojans have a camp and the Latins are uh, based in their city and ultimately are besieged in their city. Now, what Virgil has set up there is a situation that's very, very comparable to the situation in the Iliad, where the Achaeans are in a camp, the Greeks are in a camp, and the Trojans are, are in a city. Um, so to that extent, it's quite a positive indication for the Trojans, because the Trojans are in the same position in the Aeneid that the Achaeans, the Greeks, are in the Iliad. The, the people that occupy the camp in this kind of tradition win eventually, they, they take the city and they're, they're victorious. So the implication is that the Trojans are ultimately going to capture the city of the Latins, whatever name it, it really has, <clears throat> and uh, be victorious. But there are other things happening here as, as, as well. The Trojan camp is described in interesting ways by the poet Virgil. In particular, he's very clever in describing the camp sometimes by the word that you would expect a camp to be described as, castra, a uh, good plural um, word, camp, um, but also by another word entirely. He often describes the Trojan camp as an urbs, as a city. And I just wanted to dwell on that a little bit, because it's a very subtle thing, but it's very, very evocative as, as well. Because on the one hand, if you call the place where the Trojans have settled themselves in Italy on their arrival an urbs, then it makes that camp into ooh, a kind of proto-Rome, um, the first foundation of Aeneas in, in Italy, um, the, the ancestor of the city that these people are sitting in as they read this, as they read this poem. Um, now, of course, that camp is under threat uh, constantly. So imagine how um, calling it an or making it sound like an early version of Rome, contributes to the reader's feelings about that threat, you know, when Turnus gets inside and threatens to, 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 to overcome the place in, in Book Nine, for example. You're emotionally bound to this um, city, and to this, well, I've done it myself, you're emotionally bound to this foundation, to this, to this, to this camp. Um, uh, because Virgil has made us think of it as a city. But think of it another way as well, because Homer is still hovering in the, in the background here. Um, Homer, in Homer's setup, the city is the vulnerable thing. The city is the thing that's going to be destroyed. It's the camp that's going to be successful. So whenever Virgil refers to the camps as an urbs, he makes it Rome, but he also makes it vulnerable at the same time. He makes it sound like the thing that's going to be destroyed. And it's just by that deployment of a simple word, urbs, that he manages to provoke all those associations. So we've, we've seen Aeneas sort of trying to uh, establish his cities sort of any way he possibly can in the Mediterranean. We've, we've seen how it is when he gets to uh, Italy where sort of interesting uh, things happen in association with the real city of Rome. The real city of Rome is really kind of tangible in the second half of the, of the, uh, of, of, of the poem. And that's one of the things that Virgil is, is playing with, the extent to which these foundations of Aeneas are the city of Rome or are like the city of Rome, or the extent to which, you know, the city of Rome that Aeneas visits in Book 8 is the city of Rome uh, because it's on the site of the city of Rome, or is completely un un unlike it. There's one further kind of theme that I want to um, follow here, though, in, re in relation to cities. And it's the idea which seems very, very strong in the Aeneid, that you don't get to found your new city unless you destroy another city, a city that, uh, that stands in rivalry to it or precedes it. So I've been talking about the Aeneid as a a poem that's very interested in cities, but a poem that's also very interested in founding cities. Well, 
The Aeneid is also a poem that's very interesting in destroying cities as, as well. One whole book, book two, is given over to describing the, the, the agonising uh, destruction of the city of Troy. But at the end of book four as well, the end of the Dido book, also reminds us, if we need reminding, that the city that she founded um, has a time limit on it. It will be destroyed as well. And her death is kind of a, uh, an anticipation, made an anticipation by Virgil of the destruction of her city much, much later in, in history. Um, I've also mentioned the city of the Latins, which is a kind of peculiarly anonymous city. We don't know where it is. Um, it doesn't have a, a name. And the implication is that that is going to cease to exist as well. So every, in, in the process of founding Rome, uh, lots of other cities will be destroyed. Now, just to sort of bring that home, um, I'm going to read a little bit from uh, book 12 of, uh, of the Aeneid. So at the very, very end of the poem. It strikes me as a really striking moment where Aeneas gets his men together um, for a kind of a final attack, a final push in this war against the Latins. And it turns out that it's a final push um, against uh, the city. So Virgil says, calling the leaders of the Trojans together, Menestheus, Segestus and brave Serestus, he took up position on some rising ground and the whole of the Trojan legion joined them there in close formation without laying down their shields or spears. Aeneas addressed them standing in the middle of the high mound of earth. There must be no delay in carrying out my commands. Jupiter is on our side. No man must go to work half-heartedly because my plan is new to him. The city is the cause of this war. It is the very kingdom of Latinus. And if they do not this day agree to submit to the yoke, to accept defeat and to obey, I shall root it out and level its smoking roofs to the ground. Am I to wait until Turnus thinks fit to stand up to me in battle and consents to meet the man who has already defeated him? O oh, my fellow citizens, this city is the head and heart of this wicked war. Bring your torches now and we shall claim our treaty with fire. So I've read there until about sort of line 575 of the last book of the Aeneid, the last book of the Aeneid. What we were told at the beginning of the Aeneid was that it would be about um, a character who leaves Troy and founds Rome. That's the kind of uh, implication at the beginning of the poem. Now, there are ways in which his killing of Turnus at the very end of book 12 is kind of like a foundation, but it's very, very metaphorical if so. Much more prominent in book 12, it seems to me, is this emphasis on destroying the city of the Latins. And I'd just like to leave you contemplating how peculiar it is for the hero of this epic, Aeneas, to offer as the kind of game plan for the campaign which will win the war of the second half of the Aeneid. How strange it is for him to say that it's all about the destruction of a city, the levelling of a city to the ground. Isn't that the opposite of what Aeneas was supposed to be about?